Hey guys, how's it going? Today we've got a couple of projects to work on. The first one is a mangave repotting project. We've got three of the new mangaves from Proven Winners coming out next year to repot and put in the Hartley. And then we've got some plant digging and transplanting to do. So right in this space, well, you can see the boxwoods sitting here, which are intended to complete our hedge around this brick patio area. But I've got a few plants that I would like to relocate. So we've got a couple of hostas here. We've got a boxwood. This is either a green tower or a grand blandy. And my goodness, chickens. What on earth, girls? What is going on in here? My word. Do you guys have a, where's the other one? Where is she? Here she comes, I think. Come on, there you are. This poor girl just molted and was broody. So she's looking a little rough, but she's starting to put on more feathers. What are you guys just making a ruckus about in here, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna be working around you a little bit today. Mm-hmm, you want some new broccoli plants? I'll get you some. Anyway, um, so we need to get those three plants and then there's one pink yarrow right here. So on the other side, this one right here, I would like to dig that one and transplant it. In the process, I'm hoping to eradicate, this is a wisteria that used to grow on a very small and sort of random pergola, maybe we have footage of what that looked like in the corner of this area. Probably had a specific purpose at one point, but the wisteria was planted at the base of it. We thought we dug it out. Clearly we did not. We've been just hacking it back every once in a while as it needs it. But when we dig this boxwood out, I'm hoping we can untangle the roots of the wisteria so that we don't deal with that anymore. We shall see. I don't intend on planting the boxwoods today. I just kind of want to get the area prepared and ready. So anyway, let's start with these mangaves. They're really beautiful. And I did show them to you guys when we got them in earlier this spring and we did plant one of these, the Lavender Lady, in one of the containers behind the Hartley, but I kind of want a trio for the table inside. So this one, it's just gorgeous. There's something about the color that makes it have a kind of certain glow to it. I think that might be the creamy margin around each one of the leaves. It just makes it pop. And this isn't hardy in our zone, none of these are. In fact, I think this one might be the hardiest. I think it's hardy down to a zone seven, but this one is a zone nine through 11 right here. And it doesn't get huge, like 10 to 12 inches tall. And it spreads out, oh, about like 16 to 18 inches. So we can expect a little growth from it, but not a tremendous amount. And then we've got one called Tooth Fairy, which has put on quite a lot of growth since we first got it. And in the end, it's going to be very similar in size to this one. These both will top out at about eight to 10 inches, and this one will spread out like a foot to a foot and a half or so. So this one in the end might be a little bit wider, but at the moment it looks like this one is fixing to be way bigger than this one, but in the end they'll be very similar. And then this one is called Bad Hair Day, which is a very apt description, a very great name for this one. And I think this one's pretty much topped out at its full size. However, it put on a ton of leaves in the center since it arrived. And the more sun they get, I think the more vibrant the colors are. This one was kind of tucked away in the corner of the greenhouse. I think where it's gonna go, it should get plenty of sun to create this beautiful color. But you can see the new leaves are a little bit lighter in color. So about 10 to 12 inches tall for the max height. So we're getting really close. And about a 10 to 20 inch spread. But you can see I've got a collection of gray containers, both concrete and uh, clay. I think they're just gonna be a really beautiful, almost kind of monochromatic display. I've got the cactus mix, which is what we're going to pot them in. This shouldn't take us too long. We've got saucers for all of the containers. So let's get these done. I thought we would just set up right here out in the shade and we can keep the mess out here and take them into the Hartley once they're all done. Oh, oh my goodness. <sighs> Look at that. Holy moly. All right. Well, A little layer at the bottom.
I used its own pot as a guide and then just tried to kind of funnel soil in around it so that we don't have to get back up into this container once we put the root ball down in here. Okay, I'm breaking up the root system just a bit here. These tend to be okay being pot bound, so I'm not super worried about it. And down it goes. Oh, ho, ho. really close to perfect. I'm gonna have to put a couple handfuls of soil in. Oh, that looks so good. So now this one is quite a lot shallower. I'm hoping the root system's gonna allow me to kind of spread it out. It might, let's try. That turned out perfect. Perfect size for this pot. Okay, last up we've got the Tooth Fairy, which these were not super well rooted when they arrived. In fact, a couple of them fell out of their container. So this will be very easy to fit into this container. Look at that. Very pliable root system. I love that. Still, I'm gonna use fresh soil though. There they are all done. Don't they look great? Oh, I love each one of them in the container that they're in. I just think it's perfect. I will probably top dress this one and this one with stones as soon as they have a chance to kind of settle in and I can see how quickly they dry out in the Hartley. This one, there will be no need because you can hardly see the soil. My goodness, those chickens, my goodness. Anyway, so let's go get these put in place. I love the way they look in this corner. They are beautiful. I got a little wild with my water right there, but they're all watered in. I think they're gonna be very happy. You can see at this point of the year, we've got the shades still drawn. It's gonna be 97 today, but the rest of our 10 day is in the 80s, which is awesome. So as it gets increasingly cooler this fall, we'll start uh, thinking about putting the shades back up and then the, all the plants in here will get full on sun. But this area is uh, west facing, so the west sun in the late afternoon comes in here and that's why there was nothing on this table because whatever I put there was unhappy. And I think that these will really benefit from all that sun. That's just such a good look over there, I love it. And little update while we're in here, all the plants that we recently repotted have put on so much new growth. The ficus right here, this is a Roy ficus, looks amazing and then this is a, I think an anas. Anastasia, am I right? Yeah, Klingon Anastasia ficus, and then a lily pads ficus, which this one was looking kind of puny. And now, I mean, I think it's put on 
like several inches of growth and a bunch of brand new leaves. It looks so good. And then our asparagus fern, which was so root bound, looks amazing. And mangaves are just such a neat plant anyway. I mean, you guys know we've got the catch a wave out in one of our urns out in the south garden. It's got a massive bloom stalk on it. But they're a mix between a manfreda and an agave. So you get the growth habit, the growth rate of a manfreda with kind of the elegance of the uh, agave. I just think it's really fun, all of the different colors and structures and growth habits. We also planted, what was the name of the ones that we planted? Thunderbird maybe? The ones at the end of my parents' swimming pool and they look amazing. When we're out there next, I'll give you an update on those. So project number one, success. Now we've got some digging to do. So this is definitely not the best time of year to be digging up and transplanting things, but we need to get this project done and get these boxwoods in the ground. So what I will do, especially like with this sun loving yarrow, it's gonna be planted out in a sunny spot. So I'm gonna cut it back, dig it, and then we will move it. That way it doesn't have all that top growth to support. It can kind of focus on sending out roots and establishing before it needs to feed the foliage canopy. And that one is the firefly something it's it's a pink one right now the blooms look faded uh, but it's very beautiful delicate pink with the hostas i might not cut them all the way back we might just see how it goes because they're going to be transplanted to a, a shady spot rather and uh they'll get plenty of moisture so they might be okay i'll just need to groom them up a little bit and see what happens this is a is it coast to coast or gold coast something like that this one, I don't think I planted this one. I think this one was here. It looks like there's a little autumn frost down there as well. So I'll probably do hostas first, get those in, watered in, and then we can do the boxwood and the yarrow. We're going to be able to divide this one, maybe have four plants out of one. One beautiful plant. The hostas came out with a fairly shallow root ball, so I'm gonna to try to sneak them in around this locust tree. There's a whole bunch of root activity in this area, so it makes it hard to plant anything with a larger root ball, but if I could sneak these in, that'd be awesome. Now, I did divide the largest one into two pieces. I'm not gonna take it down any further than that, even though in that one big hosta, there's technically eight plants, eight individual plants. It's just amazing how they grow like that, but I'm just gonna keep them in two clumps and let them, <laughs> Kind of acclimate to this new location. Ideally, we would be able to get a larger root ball out, but it just wasn't possible in this area at some point in the past history of this garden. Underneath that golden rain tree, somebody put landscape fabric down. I mean, I'm not 100% against landscape fabric. We used it underneath the arb hedge here because we had such a bindweed problem, and underneath one a part of our boxwood hedge in the Persephone garden, and it really has helped with that. So there are some cases where I do use it. But in this area, at some point, somebody put some down and it's really deep. Like it, I don't know how many layers of compost or mulch have been put on top of it, but that's about how far our plants that we plant under that tree will go. Like the root system goes down to that fabric and then it stops. So that's why the root balls aren't very big. Anyway, I've got my Biotone starter fertilizer and uh, I've apparently forgotten my shovel back where I dug these out. So I need to go get that. Then we will get these in the ground.
Oh my goodness, they look beautiful right here. And I know that hostas are gonna do well in this space because right across the sidewalk here, we've got some Hudson Bay hostas that have been here for at least two or three seasons. And they're sitting here with very little to no leaf burn. I mean, you can find little spots with burn but these look awesome. And for us, like making it through over a month at like 105 to 110 degree dry heat, that's pretty amazing. Either the hostas do really well in this spot or Hudson Bay is just a phenomenal variety. I love the look of it. But that gives me great hope for this space right here. And maybe we can fill in. This would be a beautiful look right here. We could fill in with more hostas. And I do want to eventually connect something, some sort of a little pathway, but probably flagstones, like we're doing around the grass in front of the Hartley, but just a little flagstone pathway that leads to a bench, you know, seating area. I had big, sort of big plans starting for this space this past spring. And I was about this close to hauling off and removing a ton of sod, but I am so glad that I didn't because we ended up having so many projects going on, so many other things going on that having another spot that's torn up. And while this is definitely not finished and it's fairly empty, at least it's tidy, you know, and it's mulched and you don't see drip tubing and you don't see white or white powder soil. It's got a nice top dress. So anyway, I would rather have it be like this than have even more areas torn up. We got to button some stuff up in the back first. Okay, so now we need to dig out the boxwood and the yarrow. Got the last two out and here's a look at the space before we head out because we're done in this area for now. So what we will do is we're just gonna kind of level this space out and remove these rocks. We will keep a flower bed around here, but I'm not gonna do annuals, I don't think in this space anymore, nor will I do hostas. I'm gonna leave these hostas, you know, for as long as they'll stay nice, but I think I just wanna do some kind of really low maintenance ground cover like a lamium or something like that that can handle sun and shade because this is a super weird area. It's one of those spots that really gets no sun until the very end of the day, and it's really only the edge of it. So if you want something that looks really uniform, it's hard to get something that will do well in both kinds of situations, especially if it's that hot afternoon, early evening sun. I remember when I worked down at the garden center, people would ask me that, like, I've got this spot in my garden that's shade all day long until about four o'clock. And then it gets sun from four o'clock until seven o'clock. So it gets three hours of like intense sun. So it's not like you can put a full, full sun loving plant there because full sun means they need four to six plus hours to be productive. You can't put a shade plant there. So it needs to be something that can do kind of both part, part shade, part sun, but plants that can withstand that intense sun and then be in full shade the rest of the day. Those are a little bit few and far between. And I think I'm just done fighting with annuals in this spot. We've tried so many different things and it's just been one of those that we have to pull a hose out to every day in water, even though there's drip in this area. And I don't think that that's worth it. Gotta find something that's gonna work in this space instead of fighting with it every year. Anyway, we need to put one or two more boxwoods coming out this way and then we'll take off down this side. And then we got our yarrow out, so we're good to go there. And we'll end up being right at the base of this wisteria almost, and then we'll take off in this direction. It will be nice to have the boxwoods 
out of their containers to not have to water them every day. I know Erin will be happy to have this area sort of buttoned up. And you guys, after I take my plants out, instead of pre-watering them, which you can do before you dig them out, it just makes the root pulse so darn heavy. So I usually like to bring something, if it's hot like this, I don't do this in the spring when I'm just moving things around and it's cool out, but I happen to have these two pond plant containers, so they're watertight. Um, I just pop the root ball down in here. I have my water can full of water and I just saturate the root ball and just let it soak it up for a while so that we are you know, planting a really wet root ball. And then we will just make sure to keep them super soaked for the next little bit. Okay, this might be crazy, but I think I'm gonna put the boxwood right here. Nice, don't have to move very far. So we had a container here. Remember the one with the little topiary? And the topiary was a juniper. You can see it's clearly quite a bit more shaded than it used to be. So the topiary wasn't loving it. Boxwoods can do shade or sun though. So if I put that boxwood here to have a little bit of evergreen structure, that'd be really pretty. <gasps> nice. All right, well, let's get this one planted. Oh, that turned out just beautiful right there. I love it because everything in this space right here, everything loses its leaves. So it'll be nice to have one little evergreen in this space. The next evergreen we have, we've got boxwoods in the containers there. And you know, there will be more here once we get the boxwood hedge planted. And then this bed, which has been a complete disaster this year, has a weeping blue spruce in it. The chicken coop bed uh, succumbed to spider mites horribly bad like the worst that we have ever had them and i contemplated for a brief moment just pulling everything just wiping it all out and starting over but we've been able to recuperate the zephyrine roses they have a bunch of damage but i don't think they've got any active mites on them anymore as well as the blue spruce the roses are okay it's a, all the annuals were wiped out i had to cut the daylilies back Anyway, it's just been a little bit of a struggle this year. It's usually a really sweet little bed full of color. So you win some, you lose some every year. But that boxwood right there is a win for sure. And for our last plant of the day, the pink yarrow ended up right here, right behind the kind of yellowish agastache. I think this is a quick fire fab hydrangea. It's either quick fire or quick fire fab. It looks an awful lot like our quick fire fabs in the back corner, which if I had to tell you my favorite hydrangea, it would be that one. In fact, we have toyed with the idea, you know, our limelight prime hedge at the end of the loop behind the Supertini Vista bubblegum. Kind of want to take all of those and move them and put quick fire fabs in their place because they're just, they're stunning. They're stunning, they're always full of bloom and they're really bright and sparkly and they still turn that really beautiful color in the fall. And I think I prefer that over having that limey color. So I don't know, we'll see what happens there. But I think the pink will be beautiful here because all of these things are annuals. And so if we have a pink yarrow here, then we can continue on with pink yarrow in this space, which will be right in front of the, this is the Retro Echinops right here, the Globe Thistle. And I've got these through this whole area and they get quite a lot taller than they are right now. 
we started these from seed this year, so they're just kind of babies at this point. Some are a little more robust than others, but I think they're gonna be a beautiful backdrop for some pink blooms up front. And you guys, that is it for today. Super happy with the mangaves. They look so great. In fact, while we're on the subject, let's run over and look at the one in the urn real quick. It is blooming. It's, the blooms are kind of insignificant. The bloom stalk is not insignificant, but the blooms up top aren't super showy. All right, <laughs> look at this. Oh my goodness. So the blooms came out and then just kind of produces like little mauve colored, almost like stamens. There's no real petals that you can see. So I don't know why I'm trying to block the sun from the <laughs> camera, but anyway, um, yeah, it, it's an impressive bloom stock, like I said. And mangaves, while I thought that some varieties were not monocarpic, this one is, which means the mother plant, when it pushes a bloom stalk, it's on its way out. At the same time, it blooms it usually produces a bunch of uh, pups along the bottom, so a bunch of baby plants that you can then take and perpetuate after this one goes. And it usually takes several months for it to kind of meet its end. And we just wanted to experience what the bloom stalk would be like. And I have to say, like without being staked, this thing is strong. I mean, it's perched up there and we've had some really strong winds. So I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. The mangaves as a whole have been really fun to work with. So I'm hoping like the ones that we potted today, I don't see any evidence of any bloom stalks happening or starting to form. So I'm hoping that they stay kind of put and, and don't produce bloom stalks because I would love for those to be able to stay in the Hartley for as long as they are happy there. And I'm super happy that we got those plants moved. It was just one of those things on my list and not one of the things that I really wanted to do when it was super hot. And now that, I mean, it's still hot today, but it's not near as hot as it has been. So I just needed to get it done. Happy it's done. So we will just be keeping those very, very moist over the next couple of weeks at least. We are going to, I think I mentioned we're going to cool down here. Uh, one of the days is in the 70s. So I think we are on our downward trend into fall, which I will welcome. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.